Are we live? I think we're live. Um, let me check real quick. I want to avoid the looping audio that happened at one point. Oh, hey. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Hello there. Uh, let's get back to the window. Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you are. Um, or if you're watching this after the fact. So in this video, in this stream, I'm going to kind of go over post-processing of images that come out of the Seastar S50 telescope. Um, the... I'll get into why you might want to do that uh, later, but first a little digression that I think might be worth mentioning. I've covered a couple of little accessories that might be worth having if you have a C-Star telescope, but uh, I don't have them with me, but the uh, one of them is a lens cover and one is a batten off mask. And I purchased them online, but they're 3D printed and someone in the comments offered to 3D print designs for people, which actually made me, um, it, it made me, uh, it, it brought something to mind where if you go look at um, Thingiverse, there are a lot of designs out there for, I, I hadn't actually looked, I'd been meaning to. Uh, but there's actually a number of designs of things for the Seastar S50. So lens caps, batten off mask, level pads, uh, dew shield. Although um, I'm not sure how effective that dew shield is. I, well, maybe it is. And uh, filter holders and other various little pieces. And uh, a laser guide mount. That's interesting. A... Wise cam mount. Uh, I think I had seen a solar, oh yeah, solar alignment target. So there's some interesting things out there that people have, uh, that people have made that uh, might be worth kind of getting into in another, uh, in another video. But I just thought I'd highlight that in case anyone, uh, in case anyone, uh, has a C star and wants to look at some possible accessories. Uh, hello. Hi there. Um, hi Alson. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, so let's get into, uh, kind of what I was going to cover. Uh, so I'm going to talk about photo st stacking on the C star, which I'll get into what that means. It's not meant to be a tutorial. It's kind of more just an overview. I might be doing a quick start guide in the next few days, uh, just kind of like how to get going as quickly as possible. But as, as you'll be able to see, it's um, there's not much. Uh, like you can get satisfactory results pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to use Cyril, which is uh, free and open source astronomy uh, image processing software. It's uh, I'll also be using Starnet++ which is another kind of free plugin you can add to Serial. Um, I'm not going to go into the configuration of that, but uh, it takes a minute or two to get set up. Um, but it's already set up on my machine. Uh, so the a quick review: the CSTAR S50. We've talked about. I've talked about it before. And for if you're not familiar, it takes a series of 10 second exposures, and then it. Uh, processes them in telescope, it uh, stacks them, it combines them so you get better, uh, higher quality, reduces noise, the graininess. Uh, by default, it produces a JPEG and a, a FIT file, which I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, the nice thing about the JPEG is it's kind of instant gratification. You, you can see what you captured as you're capturing it, and then when you hit stop, you have something immediately that you can share. Uh, without any further work. And the results are actually pretty, pretty good. Um, but on the, 
downside, you give up some control, it processes it for you, and it's kind of a black box. They might, maybe one day they'll have uh, some settings you can adjust, but right now it's just kind of um, a black box. The fit file is um, kind of the combined exposures, but it is it doesn't have all the processing uh, applied to it. So you can process those yourself, and I'll go over that. And, um, oh, hi. Hi there. Hi, Chester. Uh, yeah, the uh, getting started guide. Uh, I mean, this will kind of, this will give a very high level overview this video, but, um, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going to get into too many. Um, I won't necessarily, well, we'll see where we go, where we land on this. Uh, yeah, the C star is really, it's impressive. Uh, someone made a comment that they were uh, in the community board, community posts that they were, it was kind of impressive, the, the results for a 42 minute exposure that I got from, I'll, I'll, we'll get into that, but the Orion Nebula. And, uh, and I have just about as, the skies where I live are about as bad as you can get. Um, and I guess from my point of view, if you can get these kind of results here, then if you live somewhere that's even a bit darker, you're going to get probably better, better results. Um, so anyway, the, the, so the, by default, the C star produces a JPEG and a fit file. And then there's a setting in the app where it will, it will save each of the 10 second frame, uh, exposures it takes as both a JPEG and a fit file. So in the case of where I had, uh, you know, if you have a 10 minute exposure, that would be 60, uh, 60 frames that it takes a, a picture, uh, that it saves, um, in a folder. So, uh, that's, that's, uh, kind of the high level overview. Now a fit file, it's this, uh, kind of standard, uh, astronomy, um, kind of interchange format that's been around for literally over 40 years. Um, and it's used professionally and, and such. And it's, it's very common in astronomical software. Uh, sometimes I found that some image processing software, a lot of it does these days, but some there every once in a while I'll run across something where it's like, I can't open the file and I'll have to start a specific piece of software to uh, get it. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's an interesting format. Um, you, like you can combine different data sets and it's kind of extensible. It's very flexible. You can add data like it'll the c like it'll say like some telescopes and, and and cameras will tag the file with what it was pointing at um which can be handy when you're when you're processing things after the fact uh so just a quick glossary the the stacking like i was saying is combining a bunch of the photos stretching you'll hear um Basically, the the files, the fit files, uh, when you open them, they look like there's nothing in them, and it's because they represent a very large uh, set of possible brightness values, and so we'll, it it'll mostly be dark. But by stretching it, you kind of normalize the values, so you can you can actually see the data, and we'll we'll get into that, um, and. I'm going to mention some things and then not talk about them again. Uh, when you're, when you're taking, when you're doing astrophotography, uh, there's, uh, different kinds of exposures and some of these, uh, are calibration, um, exposures, uh, that correct for different problems within, with the telescope or the sensor. So like edge darkening, vignetting, there's, uh, uh flat frames, so basically the calibration frames are called bias, dark, and flat frames, and they correct different problems with the optical uh, set. The C-Star produces light frames, which are just your what you're taking a photo of, and there are no bias, dark, and flat frames. I'll, I'll point it out when, we bring in, when I bring it into uh, Cyril, but there's none of those calibration frames involved in this particular, what I'm going over today. Um, so, okay. 
so now why might you want to why might you want to process the photos yourself uh, instead of just using the JPEG that it comes with or that comes out of the telescope? It gives you more control uh, because maybe you want to make certain choices. You might want to kind of push the image and bring out details that maybe by default aren't being displayed. But it, it, when it's processing, when the telescope's processing it, you might want to combine multiple days. Like the Sea Star, you can take these nice long exposures, reasonably long exposures. But if, say, you want to take a photo of a nebula over multiple nights, uh, potentially you could combine those. But by default, uh, the the Sea Star will just do one day at a time or one session at a time. And so if you if you manually do it yourself, you can kind of combine data. And then the other problem is you might have uh, you might have ended up taking doing like a half hour exposure and then there was a problem uh, part way through and the net result ends up uh, garbage uh, coming out of the tele like the processed frame. but the individual frames, there might be a lot of them that are salvageable. Uh, like, uh, say clouds roll in partway through the, uh, the session, but it's not, but like thin clouds. So it doesn't completely stop taking pictures, but it just kind of makes every photo fuzzy, like halfway through your session. So if you just take what comes out of the telescope, you, you uh, without processing it yourself, that that's kind of a loss. Um, and plus, why would you want to do it? It's it doesn't take long, so why not? Yeah, as uh, Chester, uh, let me let me expand that. Yeah, it allows you more control to. Uh, uh, yeah, and there might be um, stylistic choices you might want to make. Um, uh, like a lot of people, they they'll process their images to use a, a certain color palette that's common with Hubble Space Telescope. Um, uh, uh, photos, but, um, so, uh, switching the software I'm using is called Cyril and, uh, let me try to open that. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Um, oh, I've got a bunch of windows on my laptop screen and it's kind of, uh, hard to uh hard to uh juggle them all um so anyway uh so here's cyril and by default it's i mean like a lot of software it's uh technically oriented software it's kind of uh it's fairly utilitarian it's not uh but so there's two things i i don't don't pay attention to this image that's here i'll show what what i did here but what I, I have uh, some examples here on in a folder. And what you do, there's two things. You can open an image or you can set with this home directory uh, or this home icon, like kind of the, the base directory of where you're going to be processing. So let's look at example one. And here I'm going to open, this is uh, the photo I took of, uh, this is kind of, um, I hate it when I do that. Let me see. There we go. So, so here's a, a, an exposure I took. This is the raw image. You can see it, it has its little custom footer here. This is or not raw image. This is the processed image that comes out of the telescope. Um, this was a 42 minute exposure of the Orion Nebula M42, SEA 42. And uh, this is this is the the, the result that uh, that it comes up with. So it's it's not bad. It's 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 actually really good. Um, but then here are this is so this is kind of a JPEG that came from that same night uh, that it produces. So there's two things like there's the things the images that are on the telescope itself, and then there are what ends up in the app. And so the thing I just, that I first showed was the app. Now these other two photos that are say stacked are the, um, 
are the things that came out of the uh, uh, th that are on the telescope. So this, so it's, so what we're doing here is we're looking at the fit file. This is without turning on the setting where it saves individual uh, 10 second exposures. So it just, this is what it combined and what it stacked itself. And uh, here's the fit file. So as you can see, there's, uh, let me get this on screen. It looks kind of weird. Um, this is what I was saying where uh, the image is in linear mode here by default. And so you don't really see much. So if we turn on auto stretching, now this won't apply the stretch to the image. It just basically makes it easier for us to see what's actually in this photo. So now you can see this is what's in this fit file. Now the green is, um, the green cast is uh, um, kind of, uh, that's, that's just a side effect and we'll, we'll take care of that. Um, let me just check. Okay. So there's also a histogram view, which really kind of pushes things and you can really see what kind of data is there. So you can see that there's actually a lot that the sea star captured in that 42 minutes. Like these, these streamers here are like these kind of wisps of nebulosity that go all over the place. Um, but then you see like there's a lot of this kind of greenish or this graininess in the edges. And that's because um, of the way the images are, are processed and stacked. But you can actually see there's quite a bit there. But since these corners are kind of terrible, let's just, um, to start with, we're just going to crop those out. And so you can see now it's a little bit more... Um, some of the graininess is gone. I mean, from the corners, we're just kind of going to ignore that for now. And so let's go back to the auto stretched view, which again, isn't, uh, isn't, uh, it looks kind of weird. So there's, so within Cyril, there's all these different kind of, um, uh, tools that you can apply, uh, to your images. Um, and we're not even going to touch uh, most of these. We're just going to do a few things. One, we're going to do uh, background extraction, which will kind of clean up things quite a bit. You'll, you'll see in a moment. So it basically kind of masks out uh, where it thinks the background is. And you can manually adjust this, but I'm not, for the sake of this demo, I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to compute the background and then hit apply. And look at how much that cleaned that up. Um, it got rid of the green. It kind of, it's still not stretched. So I go to linear and it's still kind of, you know, needs to be processed. But you can see it, it kind of made the image a bit more palatable. Uh, so, so then, um, so we did the background extraction. There's a step called photometric color calibration. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. That's sometimes a uh, that's sometimes a, something that people do at this point. So I'm going to just um, save this, and I'm going to do this step here where it's kind of interesting. Um, it lets you this star net. Th this is a common thing that back back when I kind of started in the first time I did astrophotography was many, many years ago, and it was with film cameras. And the thing I f find interesting uh, about modern um, astrophotography is you can really do some, some things. I hear, I hear a door. Um, anyway, um, Anyway, so one of the things you can do is you can set, you can pull out the images of the stars. So then you can do some processing of like the nebula, the nebulosity without kind of doing weird things to the stars. Um, so let's do this. So we, I just picked, I just brought up the setting and I just said pre-stretch pre -stretch a linear image. 
and generate star mask. And so, so it's processing it. Runs for a little bit. Um, and okay. So notice how it removed the stars. It's kind of magical. I, I find it fascinating. Um, so I'm going to go back to linear mode and see it's still kind of... So now we're going to stretch it for real. And I'm just going to do a simple histogram stretch, and so, which is basically what you kind of saw before. So we can go apply and then close that and then... Um, and then we can go maybe uh, increase the color saturation a little bit. And like I say, I'm not doing anything too crazy with this image, but just this is just to kind of give you the idea of, of, what, of what, this, uh, what this does. And now the step I sometimes forget is at this point to save, because then we're going to just um, recombine and so you can see, see the stars aren't there, but I can start bringing them in. Where are they? Oh, <sighs> skipped a step. Okay, I have to load the starless image. Okay, and I've got to it load the star mask. Okay, so now we can bring, start bringing in the stars and you can you can basically kind of do it to taste. So if you want like all the stars back, but maybe you want to tone down the stars a bit, so you can kind of see, um, so you can see the uh, the nebula better. Um, and at this point, you can oops, you can um, you can kind of uh, tweak around like some of the the you know increase the black point so. You can see we can we can still adjust this a bit to kind of uh, do some further kind of processing of it. Um, yeah, and so yeah, by bringing up the black point, you can kind of darken the background. And there's like so many different settings here. You can see how this this changes kind of. Um, but basically, what I was trying to get, not in general was to try to get more detail and the kind of the core of the Orion. This case, we just kind of blew, blew it out, but um, uh, for the sake of moving, moving on, um, I'm not going to go too far into it, but, but yeah, you can kind of see um, it brought out more detail, more of the wispiness. And, and if you spend more time on it, or if you do the manual stacking, you can get more detail. So, so that is just this that is uh yeah um way way more detail was it taken with the uh c star oh yeah yeah i mean so that's the other thing um you know yeah i mean this is the fit file that kind of the pre-stacked fit file. And if I would have spent more time kind of on the curves, I could have brought out more detail. And I know I've seen some people where they take uh, kind of exposures from like the trip, kind of the core and the trapezium area. And they, they combine it in like Photoshop to get more dynamic range. Okay. Um, Quattro 200p. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the C star, it was in a portal like eight, nine. I mean, like I say, this isn't, I'm just kind of demoing it. It's, it's not necessarily the, it's not the best result. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea of it. It only is a few steps to kind of take the fit file and start processing it and get something, you know, somewhat usable out but yeah it's way blown out here um so then the next so this was an example of just taking the pre-stacked fit file from the c star now you can go 
um, you can go. Uh, so here's here's another. Uh, this is basically the same data set, but I'm going to start with here's all the sub exposures that uh, that came out of the telescope, um, and you can also pretty quickly uh, stack it yourself. So I'm just going to go. Oops, wrong directory. I need to go there. Okay. So <laughs> I hate it when I do that. There we go. Okay. So I, you notice I had a directory called lights, and that's where basically all the subframes are. Now Cyril has scripts to process things, but um, because there are no none of the calibration frames i'm just kind of skipping i'm just processing the lights and by default the scripts expect there to be the calibration frames the darks the biases um but i there they have some add-on scripts and and one of them is without dark bias and flat uh, frames so i'm just gonna kind of run so this is processing the 42 minutes of uh, of subframes and it's just kind of blasting through it um, so this will it's one more pass after this one and it will then have kind of the stacked result so it'll have a fit file similar to what comes out of the telescope but one that Cyril itself oh Two more passes so this is the last one um it'll be a fit file kind of like what came out of the out of uh, the c star but manually um or uh, it was stacked by cyril is that done okay yep done 46 seconds so here is the fit file that came out of it result.fit so let's open this and you can see similar similar to what the uh, what came out of the telescope, but let's see what happens when we stretch it. Okay, similar result. Maybe a little bit more wispiness here. Um, I don't know what kind of um, noise reduction um, or other processing are, are the C star is doing as it's as it's doing the subframes. Maybe it's not. Um, but anyway, similarly, so you can go and I'm not going to, um, well, yeah, let's just do this. So I can do the auto crop, I can do the crop and crop it. And then I can, I can crop it and then I'll do the background extraction. And again, this is all very, I'm not really mapping out some of these details, which will, which will produce better results. I'm just kind of, oh, actually, let me look at this. Because I've had this before that if, I, that if I didn't map out some of the details, the results were kind of junk. No, that's fine. Okay, fine. So it's, it's, it's similar. Um, it's very similar to to kind of uh, what comes out of the, the fit file that comes out of the out of the uh, out of the C star. Um, so let's just do one more thing here and see if that uh, star renewed um, pre stretch. But yeah, as you can see, it's kind of similar idea. It's just that you 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 stack it yourself um, instead of using the fit file. Um, let's see. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm just a nice tutorial. Yeah, I... Um, I'm definitely going to do, I, I definitely plan on doing a, um, a, a video that kind of an introduction to, uh, 
a quick start. I mean, this is this is kind of a quick start. I want to go into it just a little bit more, and with editing, maybe kind of uh, tighten it up so I'm not quite uh, um, I'm not quite uh, uh, floundering <laughs> or trying. Um, so yeah, a, a no dark bias or flats. Yeah, I mean, yes, correct. There there are none of those, and and so the results aren't actually uh, terrible. Um, I do want to spend a little bit more time to try to get some more detail out of, uh, out of the, uh, core of the, of the, uh, of the Orion Nebula. And I, there, there's some other images. I, I'm not going to get into it, uh, today, but, um, uh, the Horsehead Nebula, for example, I was trying to get, I had taken exposures over several nights and, when I combine with them with Cyril, at least my first pass at it, the results weren't as good as I had hoped, or what I, as good as I had gotten out of the the Orion Nebula, um, the, this Orion Nebula, uh, it, these exposures. But, and I've been wanting to get more more data, take more photos of it. But the problem's been it's been it's been raining here, so I've been kind of just going through things I'd already taken and trying to, uh, trying to process them. Okay. So here we are where we did the star separation. I'm going to just try doing, let's see if I do the, uh, if I do the, yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, I mean, you can also do, there, there's some other histograms in here. You can do the generalized hyperbolic one where uh, I don't want to do that one. I'm just going to, I'll do the A sign, do it a little bit to kind of push out some detail and then do the histogram transformation because it was clipping a little bit and eh, it's still clipping a little bit, but just kind of give you an idea. It's, it's similar, similar idea. Um, but yeah, so one one thing um, I was able to, I, I posted this on the community board, but uh, taking the uh, taking the uh, going through all these steps and stacking it myself, this is what I kind of had come up with, which um, it's uh, yeah, I got a bit more detail in kind of the core. Not quite where I wanted it to be, but you kind of get the idea. And this was with the, uh, it also, I also ran it through a denoising uh, through Topaz uh, to kind of, which is a paid, a non-sort, a uh, non-free software um, to kind of clean up the noise. Now, Cyril does do the, no, does do noise reduction as well. And I need to play around with that some more, but I had Topaz, so. That's what I ended up using. Um, so finally, I'm going to do one more. Uh, let me just check here. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, uh, there's a bunch of uh, chat, uh, I'm just looking through the uh, chat right now. I'm a little bit behind. Um, yeah, Chester uh, was saying like the field rotation is a is a pain. Um, yeah, I saw that too, where someone had had uh, converted the C star into an or had put it on an equatorial mount or converted it to an equatorial mount, and yeah, that the field rotation is kind of a little annoying and you, so you end up losing a lot of quality in the, uh, in the corners, which is why that, why there was more of the graininess in the corners. It's because it's, it's, uh, uh, because of the way the mount works versus the things move across the sky and ends up the exposures. And actually we'll see that in a moment when I get to the individual subframes. Um, love the vortex thing. Thank you. Um, uh, the, yeah, the, uh, 
Yeah, the the Orion Nebula Nebula is a great um, is a great target, and I I plan on doing a video about it. Um, maybe it's just going to be a short, but uh, the Orion Nebula was kind of, and Orion in general was kind of one of the first things that I, when I was a teenager, that I I would look at for various reasons, partly because um, it's such an easy target even when you're in the city. I mean, the 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 seeing wasn't as bad when I was where I lived when I was a when I was younger, uh, but it was still probably like Bordel Five or worse. Um, but anyway, um, that'll be another video for another day. So finally, I want to show kind of, um, the, uh, another reason why you might want to, um, process things in Cyril. Uh, so this was kind of a pathological, uh, a pathological case. So <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so bad. Um, so yeah, this this was this is the exposure that came out of the C star. Um, and I've had a couple of problems. Uh, <laughs> this is of the Pac-Man Nebula NGC uh, two eight one, and it it looks pretty terrible. And it's no fault of the C star. It's uh, and there's, and then as if one. One uh, problem wasn't enough. Uh, I had a second. I had a second misfire on the same target, like a day later, and we'll, we'll see what the what the problem is here. I actually forget, but there's there's two problems I've I've had with um, there's two problems I've had um, with the with the C star, and it's not again. It's not a fault of the C star. Uh, I, so where I, my backyard is kind of a canyon almost, uh, of buildings. Uh, and so I only have a narrow strip of looking up that I can, you know, maybe an hour or two, uh, at most a couple hours where I can be tracking a subject. And so I'll try to get several things done in a night. And because it is so easy to just kind of sit it out and outside and forget it, um, there's been more than once where I've let it go and it started tracking into the hot, into this, like a roof. And so it hadn't, it didn't completely obstruct the image. So it just kept stacking photos of half a roof. And so it just ended up totally being garbage. The result that came out the the jpeg and the fit file um i also had another night where i think i did an hour-long exposure and it was a nice crisp night and i went outside after an hour and some high clouds had come in and again the result was kind of garbage um but it's salvageable because i had the subframes the individual frames turned on so let me see if i can uh uh Let's see if we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I put all of the frames from those two sessions in this one uh, folder. And I am going to, I basically took all of them. I didn't look at any of these. And I'll get to that in a moment while I'm doing that. I'm basically saying, okay, here's all the frames, good and bad. And I'm just going to manually convert these so it's it, it's like a multi-step process and some of this is what the script does this this kind of uh uh these scripts do some of this stuff for you behind the scenes but you can manually do it and so that's what we're doing here um yeah yeah um high clouds ruin my yeah it does it sucks and I just realized I hadn't, I hadn't gone in to, uh, I hadn't gone, uh, I hadn't gone in and showed what I did. So let me, let me clear this all out. So basically, uh, I'm going to manually stack things here. So going into the sidebar here, I go to conversion. Uh, I do subframes. I picked all the frames from the two sessions 
and then debayer uh, symbolic link. And so I'm processing them. I already had done this step, but I forgot I hadn't turned on the screen yet. So, so all these have been processed uh, or converted. So now, so we've got the sequence calibration. We, now we need to do registration. So global deep sky, we just leave this all kind of as is. And so let me deregister register this or register all the images. So now it's kind of, and see what it's doing here on the left side. It's tracking stars and it's doing the stacking for us and it's kind of showing us how how that looked. Um, and so the cool thing is it's com it's taken all the images, it's combined them and it kind of, it plots like, um, like how how things look uh or or how they uh how the results were um let me see wait what did i do okay um wait i forget what was it i registered it i plotted it oh man the problem, part of the problem I've been having is the UI, like things get, things get kind of, um, like UI elements end up off the screen and, um, oh, I'm not thinking. Okay, sorry. Here we go. So this lets you bring up um, how does the CSAR compare to Deep, Deep Sky Stacker? I haven't actually, um, I haven't actually used Deep Sky Stacker and Auto Stacker. I, I have them on my computer, but Cyril kind of did everything I needed it to do. So I hadn't, um, yeah, and this is, <laughs> the clouds roll in. Yeah, that's that's kind of the way it's been. Um, so so going back to all of the stacked images, you can see um, like here are all the frames I got, but I can go look at um, where is it? Oh, let's. Yeah, okay. So, sorry, I forgot to... Uh, but you can kind of see... You can see the field rotation there as it's going through. These images all look reasonable. I've, I've kind of sorted them by, uh, by the scoring. Um, but let's start at the top and kind of go down. Okay, so... Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to exclude this one because it was like a comet or not a comet, a satellite. Probably oh, there's another one, satellite or airplane, probably a satellite. So these all look kind of reasonable. Um, somewhere there must be some frames. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so see, it's frames like this that end up trashing the whole result. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> so I'm just hitting spacebar to basically filter these out, these bad frames. Yeah, look at that. It's like, it's, it's, it's funny, but not funny um, that you leave it going for like half an hour and you're thinking, oh, this is going to be great. But, and then you see the final result and it's like, oh, it's like, so basically it was, it, it kept taking photos though, because there were enough stars that it, uh, it saw, it saw something it could match and it just kept going. Um, so anyway, oh, there's another one. How far? I'm about halfway done. Oh, that one's bad. There's one. And so after I get through all these, I'm going to, uh, then I stack it. 
so basically it just kind of it's it's doing the stacking in in multiple stages where first thing it does is it's matching up all the star patterns and then and then it uh and then you can filter out ones that are obviously just terrible and that looks pretty good i think i think i got all the oh, i got another satellite because a lot of times those individual satellites they're fine they'll end up getting kind of averaged out but i'm since i'm able to exclude individual frames i'm just going to do it okay so i've done that and now let's go and stack it okay so now it's it's uh it's stacking Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, okay, so now we've gotten to, <laughs> so here's the results, and, and again, you, you know, you've got kind of the, uh, let me see, is it all, is it saved, yep, so I can go do the same steps I did for all the other stuff, and I can go generate, and I'm not, again, I'm not spending extra time on this step uh, of uh, background extraction. I've, I've had it where sometimes, and look at that, look at that. <laughs> I mean, when I first did that with this data set, I was very satisfied, to say the least, that um, I had salvaged, I had salvaged the session. Um, I'm quite happy. I, uh, yeah. So, um, I can go, uh, do I want to go ahead and do that? Let's go ahead and do the, uh, star processing again. Just, uh, pre-stretch, execute, and, uh, takes a little bit of time, but it was very satisfying that I had, uh, basically kind of redeemed that hour or whatever of data I had taken. Um, because as you can see, if uh, I'll, sh I'm not going to bring them up again, but those, those, uh, what came out of the telescope just wasn't great. So I'm going to go back to linear and then this looks good. So I'm just gonna, oh no. Yeah, it was, I'm going to do the histogram. I'm just going to auto do it. It's, it's noisy, but just to kind of give an idea. Um, and I, I didn't fiddle around with the curves at all here. I'm just going to boost the saturation if a little bit too much, maybe. I don't know. It's a matter of taste, a lot of the satur color saturation stuff. Um, but uh, I know some people, I mean, it's, it's a lot of it's stylistic. Um, so there's no, there's more than one way to do it. Um, okay. So, oh, yeah, because I have all the subframes uh, registered, so in, frames in this, in this one, and then we can go back to the back. And as you can see, it's, you know, I'm kind of clicking around, but there's, there's not that many steps, really. So, yeah, I mean, it's noisy, but some of that could be cleaned up, and I didn't crop it. Yeah, I'm going to dial back the stars but still still it's i mean again it's it's not the uh it's not gonna as uh what do you uh, as uh um as chester uh said it's not necessarily going to be a national geographic but um you know you, you take it with your you know you took it yourself and and you can kind of fiddle around with it, but really it's, you know, so you can end up spending a lot more time um, fiddling around with the images uh, than you spent actually taking them. But again, terrible grain that can be cleaned up, but just to give you an idea of what it looked like before, like that's what I got because of those uh, and this. So yeah, I'd, I'd score this as a win given that I spent like, you know, I'm just doing this live. Yeah, I mean, I should have done more with the stars, but you kind of get the idea. Oops. 
um, yeah, high, high clouds. Um, let me see. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that was kind of all I wanted to cover. This actually went longer than, uh, than a lot of my previous live streams, but I wanted to kind of cover the, the scenarios of where you take, um, with the C star, you just kind of, uh, you just kind of, uh, you do no processing. You just process the fit file that comes off of it. You process all the f photos that the frames and stack them yourself. Or if you have a case where like, uh, you're combining multiple days or like what happened to me where you end up tracking part of a roof, um, you can still salvage it. Um, and so that's, that's, that's very satisfying, uh, to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I hope that kind of gave you a taste of uh, what you can do. It's it was probably like it's probably like half a dozen steps, if that, uh, in Cyril to kind of clean up the images, and and you can spend. I, I didn't want to spend the whole stream, like, but you can spend a lot of time kind of fiddling around with the different sliders and and there's uh, different histograms. Uh, there's one that does kind of more of an S curve histogram where you can kind of get kind of better results but again it's you know there's more way of more than one way to do it and uh i guess the biggest thing is the the if you don't do any processing if you don't have a technical mishap uh the results that come out of the out of the telescope are quite good i i've been very satisfied with those um and with a little bit of processing you can really make them a lot better but um but yeah, that's all I have. Um, yeah. Um, thanks for uh, everybody who showed up today. Um, I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, and yeah, uh, if there's anything, if there's nothing else, uh, I will leave it at that. Yeah. So have a good rest of your afternoon or evening and uh if you have any other questions or whenever you're watching this if you have questions leave them in the comments uh, you know the drill and uh thanks thanks for watching <laughs>